Number one, Ibble Dibble here. Hello, friends. I'm backish. I'd like to thank everyone who sent warm wishes during my absence, and I apologize if my voice sounds odd. I'm editing out intermittent hacking coughs here. I actually came down with COVID the day Megan released her crazy podcast. I was perhaps a third of the way through <laughs> before I gave up feeling very ill. I am fine. I will be fine. I would characterize myself at about 85% right now. And honestly, I am shocked by how much I have to catch up on. You leave this woman alone for three weeks and she produces so much media that it will take me another three weeks just to backtrack through it all. One way I feel Sunshine Sachs wronged her is that they never broached the problem of overexposure with her. Their exchange seemed to be pay top dollar, get maximum placements. Except a duchess is not a pool cleaner, a duchess is not a dentist, a duchess is not a real estate agent. The market is not saturated with duchesses. No one has trouble remembering who the third or fourth most famous royal duchess is. No one realizes they have a duchess problem and calls 1-800-DUCHESS. Top of mind marketing is not the way forward for her. Even as an actress, she should understand this. Jennifer Lawrence and Anne Hathaway are both examples of Oscar-winning actresses who found themselves overexposed and despised. They laid low for a while, and now they're rather more warmly received when they work and promote their work. Megan doesn't seem to understand that we've been receiving proverbial Duchess fridge magnets and postcards and coupons for a solid three and a half years, and we're simply sick of her face and voice. This would be true even if we liked and admired things she said and did. <laughs> Regrettably, we don't, do we? That's why I was annoyed slash concerned when I recently saw her pop up on TMZ. She was doing SpawnCon for Wendy Foster and perhaps also Skinny Pop Popcorn. If you're wondering what Wendy Foster is, she has a couple boutiques that are pretty typical, expensive, casual wear, the kind of place rich housewives go for day wear because sex is mostly too formal for their lifestyle. She sells Christopher Fisher cashmere, Piazza Sempione slacks, velvet tees, Neely Lotan and Ivan Grundle dresses, if you know, you know. Anyway, before now, Megan was trying to make money off of selling her own pop shots for years on Splash. And then on Backgrid, after she personally drove Splash out of business, and she's done some underhanded stuff with them. This is the photo agency she used to get that first infamous back off bitches he's mine pop shot in London, just three months into dating Harry, who was certainly not privy to her relationship with them. And the agency she used to make it seem like she was somehow being stalked in the very wealthy island suburbs of Canada, and therefore needed to move to paparazzi-free and totally non-judgmental LA. <laughs> I really hope two things. First, that companies stop giving Megan SpawnCon. And second, that she hasn't set a weekly standing appointment with a TMZ photographer. Because clearly, she doesn't get it either. Megan, you are overexposed. We are sick of you. We are sick of the Duchess don't do muchness. <laughs> Normally, TMZ doesn't buy her photos. They have their own photographers. They don't need to pay for pictures. But this is the second time of late, the first being those Jack Johnson concert pics. I'm just hoping they don't have a deal with the newly DIY Duchess. Because it annoyed me so much, I'm going to get granular and tell you everything I didn't like about this. First, I'd like to address Wendy Foster personally. Wendy, Megan looks horrible here. Do not let her dress herself and leave the store like that. Do it right and hire a stylist to help her with the look you're going to shoot because she is not selling your clothes like this. Second, I'd like to address Megan and her team, if she has one left, directly. Your SpawnCon fools no one. First, the way you insist on being popped with a security guard in Montecito is absurd. In downtown LA, fine, I get it. But who's going to jump you in Montecito? 
Are they going to do it on their way to or from the country club? Security guards as status symbols is weird and insulting to your neighbors. Also, when people have drivers slash guards, those guys carry the shopping bags and pop them in the trunk for you. The way you walk around him to make sure you show off the shopping bag and outfit to the cameras is very unnatural. If you hadn't called the pops and wanted to avoid cameras like a normal person, you'd have gotten in the car on the other side. Also, why the fight over who opens the door? Drivers open the door. You need to stop fighting over car door handles. It doesn't make us think you're a feminist. It doesn't make us think you're just an every woman who can't conceive the luxury of having a door opened for her. And it makes it clear that you've hired this guy for the occasion because this dynamic is settled between a chauffeur and their everyday client. If you were going to spend your own money on a professional to help you with this photo shoot, you should have spent your money on a stylist. Megan, you don't look good in these earth tones. I don't know who told you you did. Chocolate brown is not for you. Olive green is not for you. I can't tell if this horrid tie-inspired jumpsuit is forest green or black, but it's clashing with everything else you're wearing, including your black handbag. Just get help. Also, if you're pretending to have friends, you need to walk alongside them and talk to them. Not walk in front of them, sticking your tongue out at the camera. When you do deign to walk beside your quote-unquote friend, there's no need to gesticulate theatrically. Again, this is really coming off as a performance. If you wanted to pay a professional to help you on your big day, you should have hired a stylist, not a security guard, and you should have driven yourself. That would give the shopping bags more screen time as you walked to the driver's seat struggled a little bit getting them into the passenger side, climbed in, and left. You would seem more believable, less pretentious, and definitely be better dressed. Gosh, how tragic. How tragic. The very last thing I'd like to say, for fear of stating the utterly obvious, is that SponCon for someone in Megan's position is so disappointing and déclassé. It's fine for a D-list actress who isn't expected to be a pillar of taste or morality, or indeed to have personal standards of any sort. It's not fine for a duchess. Yes, I know Zara does it, but Zara isn't pretending to be our saint and savior. If Megan and Harry are at the point where financial need necessitates SpongeCon, she should try to balance it with more highbrow appearances, and send out her man to provide for his family. No one wants Megan for high-end fashion campaigns, but I bet Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, or Nautica would pay top dollar to get Prince Harry, the rebel British prince, to pose for their preppy all-American brands. Thanks for listening to my rant. TMZ, please, please don't encourage her. (laughs) Toodles. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.